Ah, episode 447 of the Real Life Podcast. Um, for all those people who send in reviews and tweets and say, why isn't Chalmers on the podcast? We want more Chalmers. Well, how about this? <laughs> Only Chalmers showed up today. Can you believe that? Just me and you and Liam. Yeah, we, I, brought, we had to go to the bullpen. I truly didn't know we were recording. I thought you were just talking to yourself when you started doing that. I pretty much am at this point. Well, let's let's just tell them that it's not that... Jay and Bag Milk aren't here. Mm-hmm. It's just that they are in meetings with the business daddies. Yeah, business daddies are in town. Also, Liam, crank your mic up. Um, it's up. And then bring me and Chalmers down a bit. There you go. Um, yeah, they're like, there's only a wall separating us from Bag Milk and Jay. Yeah. They're just stuck in meetings. And the three of us have been deemed not meeting worthy, which is understandable, respectable. I'm not meeting wanting to be in, even if I was worthy, there which go. I'm not. I hate meetings. So we sat on the couch and we bullshitted for about 35 minutes and we probably should have just hit record 35 minutes ago and put that out as the podcast because it was all pretty good, uh, pretty good banter because you had a hell of a weekend. I did. I did. So this last week for anybody that doesn't know was minor hockey week and minor hockey week is a pretty big deal in Edmonton minor hockey association. Um, You know, it's kind of like a tournament within the season that just, you know, you, you play all the teams you play in the regular season and, as a kid, I played in it lots. You said you played in it quite a bit. Oh, yeah. And you actually won one when you were a kid. Took me to my last try. My last year of midget, I finally won. Yeah, so I've never come close. Um, never really been on a team that made it anywhere. But, you know, as the week goes on, the more you win. And it's a bracket-style tournament, so you're allowed to lose the first game and you still have a chance to get into the final. But if you win the first game, it's then a win and or lose and you're out. You yeah, got to win to stay in. It's brackets. Game one puts you into a loser pool or a winner pool. The loser pool is just a longer way to the final, more or less. Yes. And so as the week goes on, the games obviously mean more. The difference between a minor hockey week and regular schedule uh, series is that these games are only an hour long. There's an hour's ice time and it's run time. So... It's they're quick. They're quick. It's fast paced. They are quick games. And if you go to overtime in the regular season, if you tie, you tie, and that's the game. Mm-hmm. But in minor hockey week, um, they if you go to overtime, you then go and play one minute of five on five. If nobody scores, you go then to one minute of four on four. They you know they start the clock at one minute. Buzzer rings. Everybody comes in. If you don't score, you go to three on three and so on and so on until you get to one on one. Mm-hmm. So it's very intense. A lot of these kids have never been in positions like this before. So my uh, U11 team, which is my youngest son, we lost in the... And here's a question for you. If you have two games to the final, mm-hmm. is that the semifinals or the quarterfinals? Well, the f- if does it go semis, quarters, finals, or quarters, semis, finals? Quarters, semis, finals. Okay, so we lost in the quarterfinal on Wednesday. We would, yeah. or sorry, semifinal on Wednesday. If we would have won Wednesday, we would have been in the big dance on yeah. Sunday. The other good thing about this is, is everybody that is in the finals gets to play on Sunday. It's all day long at Terwilliger. All four ice sheets are going all day. Championship games. It's electric in there. There's teams, you know, every 20 minutes, there's another team celebrating a championship and another team, you know, feeling the defeat of it. Um, So my younger son lost out, but my older son's team, his U13 team, uh, we were rolling. We started clicking right at the right time. And we played Wednesday, we won. We played Friday, we won. And then we got to the final on Sunday. But the game we won on Wednesday was the first time we'd gone to overtime. Ooh. And we went all the way down to one-on-one. Oh and God. it was insane. That's like, intense as a coach, too. It's super intense because you got to have a plan, right? You got to have a yeah. plan. You know, I think with five-on-five, five, it's more of you just, it's a possession game at that point. Yeah. Four-on-four four is a little bit more possession, but you need to have back checkers. Three-on-three yeah. three is speed, speed and strength. Mm-hmm. And then speed and strength for two-on-two, two, speed and strength for one-on-one. On one. Mm-hmm. And so you really got to like line up your kids and, and make sure you're not, you know, you, you, you don't, you leave enough in the tank for the kid that's going to be one on one. Yeah. So you can't play him at like two on two. You got to play him at three on three. Anyways, it's, but so, and, and he lost the face off and it went all the way down into our zone, but he back checked 
they fe- the kid the other kid stumbled and he had a breakaway from basically the hash marks in our end all the way to the other side and he buried it it was about a 15 second thing but that moment that kid's gonna remember that moment for the rest of his life i've never seen emotion on his face so anyways that was super excited exciting then friday we go to overtime again but this time we win it in four on four like quickly right okay now we come to sunday and we're playing beaumont and it you know it's the games go so fast i can't explain to you how fast it's nuts it's nuts how quick you these think games like are. again it's runtime it's 15 minutes but i don't know what you usually play but i remember like my last few years in midget you're playing 20 minute stop time periods and yeah. then you get to minor hockey week and it's randomly 15 minute runtime and it's insane yeah mm. and it's it's just so so next thing you know you, you you're like three minutes left in the third period and it's three three and so we go to overtime and the kids they were nervous i mean this is their first time really you know and they know that this means a lot and, um, you know, to their credit, they really kept their composure. And with, at four on four, we put out two of our biggest kids and they just, they got it done for us. And so the kids were ecstatic. Gloves Absolute, going everywhere. Gloves going everywhere. Everybody's having a good time. You get the whole trophy presentation. You get your medal presentation. You go in the dressing room, take your skates off, and then you go into the lobby and you have picture time on like a background and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, man, it was a lot of fun. You know, I told the kids, I said, you know, you're in U13, you're probably gonna play U15, maybe play U18 in rec, you just never know. Mm -hmm. So you guys have got some time minor hockey week. This is maybe some of them, their third minor hockey week in their life and they've won it now. And I was saying to them, like, I, I never got there. Like, you know, I played my, you know, and so yeah. really like relish this moment, really absorb it. And uh, they did. And, and it was great to see. Another thing, Right before the game, the kids are all nervous, so they want to come out and watch, but they were able to watch the ending of the game before Oof. and actually see the celebration. And um, I think that really, I think for some of them, that kind of put even more nerves in them. Yeah. Some of them, it takes it away. It makes it, it's like, that's what I want. I can visualize it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And after the team walked off, the coach of the other team came over and said, hello, and it was an avid podcast listener. It was Operation or Operator Rich. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's <laughs> yeah, and he's he's like, oh yeah, man, we just won. So congratulations to Operator Rich's team too. Big win. Who's a Sherwood Park? Is a, they're a Sherwood Park team, and they won it. And um, yeah, so we had a nice conversation. I mean, everybody. It's just a weird place because it's like everything is happening so fast in that building. There's one team that's happy. There's one team that's Someone's sad, winning but, every 15 minutes, more or less, with the way the ice tends Exactly. Stacker. So you see all these people that yell out. Yeah, so anyways, my son was very excited. We went to the uh, went to the Canadian Brew House afterwards and had lunch with the whole team. and Everyone got dessert. Everyone got dessert. Everyone got dessert. So nice. Yeah, so that was my weekend. I mean, it was a busy weekend, but it was very, I, very fun. I, I remember. a question about the overtime. Yeah. When it was one-on-one, -on -one, did you think about pulling the goalie? So I wanted to. Yeah. So normally what would it, what happens... It's the play, I think. I think it is. It's yeah. definitely the play. And, and uh, you know, when the, whistle, when the buzzer goes at two on two, they had been dropping the puck where in this, in the, at the faceoff dot that was oh, closest yeah. to where that ended. But that over... Like, they have to do it quickly. So when they went one-on-one, -on -one, our player immediately went lined up at center. And we were like, no, go down there. And then the other kid came to center. So then the ref came to center. And I'm, I'm kind of like, it's going really fast. And it's chaos. And I'm like, it, sh it should be down there because it should have been in their zone. And if it was, I 100% wanted to pull the goalie. But the other coach on the team was kind of like, I don't know, I don't know. And, you know, you don't want to, like, push your, your fact too much. Yeah. Because it's definitely the riskier play. Yeah. And I know of three scenarios where I, you know, you talk to other coaches all week and they say, oh yeah, my older son, this is what happened at their game. I know three scenarios where they pulled the goalie, got like three or four shots on net, didn't get it, and the other kid went all the way down the ice and scored in the empty net. Three different times. Yeah, and so now that's ingrained in my head. Yeah. I'm like, okay, this is like, it's not a given, man. Like you would think that it would be a lot easier. Two on one kind of thing. Yeah, you just got to swarm the kid if he gets the buck. But especially at that level, like there is like a, pretty large there can be at least a large speed discrepancy right there's definitely a large yeah. speed discrepancy and you know i mean like it's these kids they try their hardest but they're one slip away from being out of the play yeah you know it happens to everybody and you know one slip and then all of a sudden it's one-on-one -on -one and you're just you're on the lower end of the fast scale you're done kid yeah. can shoot from center right or you can 
I mean, just imagine if he, the kid won the face off back and you bobbled it in the corner and he shoots it all the way down the ice and it goes in the net. And you're like, well, well I, there it is. <laughs> I remember done. watching one year. It was in St. Albert, but it was still minor hockey because they use all the ice in the week leading up and face off in the neutral zone on like one team closer to one team's blue line. Yeah. So the team who was closer to the offense of zone pulled their goalie. It's two on one. And the other coach just goes, fuck it. Pulls his too. So they played <laughs> two on two, no goalie. Oh my God. See, that's <laughs> insane. Sense. That puts so much wild. pressure on the kids. Like yeah. just imagine knowing you don't have a goalie behind you Yeah. at two, like even at two on two, you're probably gripping the stick a little tighter. Mm -hmm. When you have, when you're the one kid with a goalie, you're probably playing a little looser. You know, yeah. you have a constant backup, right? Yeah. I, I just, I, I don't know. So I, don't know. I, I won it my second last year. And in my last year, we played in the semifinals and it went down to one on one. So I went out there and it was an offensive zone draw and I won it backwards, regrouped it at my blue line, kind of like, so I won it back to where a D man would be. So if we played it two on one, I would have won it. Back. It would have been good. It would have been good. I won it back, picked it up, tried. It was the dumbest thing. I regret it still. I tried to go kind of through his stick that was out. And walk around him, and he got a piece of it. And I just remember, kind of like, I tried to stop, and, and me and this guy got tangled up. Me and this guy got tangled up as I stopped to kind of like try to keep possession of the puck. I slipped, and I had to more or less just lay there and watch the guy go in on a break away from his With own an empty net. T and that, you know, that's a memory you'll never forget. Oh, heartbreaking! And it's heartbreaking, yeah, right. And I know, like, losing it in one on one when you had a goalie there and the goal, you know, that's probably a little easier to deal with. So I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm on the fence about the pulling of the goalie. I don't, I wanted to do it because I'm a risk taker, mm -hmm. but I'm glad I had somebody there to kind of be, but then them take, putting the face off at center kind of took it all out of our hands. I definitely mm -hmm. wasn't doing it at that point. Last thing you want is like to chip it up and he's gone. He's and gone. It's over. And that's exactly, yeah. so like at one-on-one, -on -one, that's exactly what happened. He, the kid just put the puck forward on the face off, went around our guy. Luckily to our kid's credit, he got back in time to stop a shot on net, mm -hmm. but like, no goalie, you would have had a guy back there. So I don't know. I don't know. It, I just, it all worked out. We made the right decisions and uh, the kids played their hearts out. And so, you know, we've, we still got the rest of the regular season and one more tournament coming up. So uh, the team is really like, they, it's funny how you see them just become more of a team after weeks like this. Yeah. They're just, they're, you know, kids that aren't normally talkers in the room are talking and it's, you know, everybody's hugging and, and kids that don't normally socialize. You know, teams at that age, when you have, like I, I once said before that U13, I believe is the biggest divide between the first and the second years. The second years, you know, like they've had a growth spurt. You can just look at the ice and just tell which ones are first years and which ones are second years. It's easy. And so like, they kind of stick to this themselves a little bit, you know, and, and after yesterday, it was, you, you, I looked at the Canadian Brewers, so I looked at the way they were sitting in the seats and it was just like, wow, this is like a total team meshing now. And yeah. it's just cool for them. You know, it's just really something they'll never forget. I, I, I'm just glad I was a part of it. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, yeah. hey, winning brings people together. Look at the Oilers right now. Oh yeah. man, six and oh, since just January 9th. Yeah, six in a row. Six in a row. And when you start winning, everyone's a little tighter. Mm. They're fighting for each other. They're standing up for each other. All that stuff. So I uh, I like I, a lot of stories in the NHL I, I, I hear and I look at, but I never really delve too deep in them because I know I can come and talk to you guys and I'm not really one that searches out articles. But because we've been playing Vancouver, like, like we just played Vancouver on Saturday, and because this story has been in the news lately, I kind of get the gist of what the Canucks management is mistakes have been but what's really the issue there is it the fact that they're already paying another coach or something like uh, yeah what, so can you just break it down for me cliff notes here why everybody is so against the way they've been handling boost per joe okay so first off it started about six weeks ago i want to say i think this is the right timeline when jim rutherford their president of hockey ops not their gm he's the poho yeah um he came out and was like yeah i've been interviewing coaching candidates which is like a weird thing to come out and say, right? Like, why do you need to come out and say that you have a co? I know Boudreaux was in his last year. Boudreaux asked for an extension. They didn't give it to him. So he was a lame duck coach. So I guess it's kind of fair to be like, yeah, well, we're talking to coaching candidates. And then they made the decision to hire Rick Tockett. And the reports are that they Tockett needed to give four weeks notice at TNT because he's a broadcaster. So there's this month. Where word is getting out, though, talk it's given his month, it's notice, and Boudreaux's on the hot seat. So then it just developed into this situation where Bruce Boudreaux knew Bruce Boudreaux knew he was getting fired Sunday morning. 
everyone knew he was getting fired Sunday morning. Every fan, every media person, everyone knew Bruce was getting fired on Sunday. And the Canucks just kept running him out there. Well, he's got to do the press conferences, run the practice, coach a fucking game. And they weren't gassing him. So what you were supposed to do in this situation, four weeks ago, you hire Rick Tockett. He says, I need a month. You get an interim. They have Mike Yo on their bench, who's yeah. been a head coach multiple times at the NHL level. You fire Bruce. You say, Mike Yo is our interim coach while we begin a search. You wait for the clock to run out on Tockett, and then you're good. But, like, it's Bruce Boudreaux, a guy who's kind of in legendary, legendary status and is known as, like, one of the good guys around the game. And it was like, you really had to do this to him and run him out this long and keep embarrassing him in a way. It was a lot. Yeah. There was just a lot of opinions. Like I, I, um, I saw a clip from Craig Button who was really just he was really emotional about how just this was the wrong thing to do. And, oh yeah. And so I knew it had something to do like that, but I didn't know it was. I didn't know that they had basically announced that they were looking for somebody else, which is just a kick in the pants, right? Yeah. Like it's it's a brutal thing to do. But then if it starts leaking out that talk is the coach, yeah, like you don't even have to like then start the search. You know how you say like yeah. you gas Brujo, you put Mike Yo as the interim and then you start your search. Well, or you just say you're you starting say, a search. Yeah, you could just say we hired Target, but he's got four weeks. Yeah. He's going to be on TNT. But yeah, yeah Bruce Boudreau, to put, and they're losing. They're not a good they're team. Terrible. Their owner's overly invested. Their GM seems to just kind of hire his buddies. Or sorry, their president of hockey ops seems to just hire his buddies. He hired Alvin already on the coaching staff is Sergey Gonchar, who Rutherford would know. Like, I don't know. It just, it feels... There's a, there's a lot that just kind of leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Like, didn't they say in the press conference, they like blame the media for this getting out there. And it's like, well, how about the fact you had a coach hired for four weeks and never announced him? It's probably yeah. going to get out. I love it when <laughs> like, they blame the media for doing their job. Yeah. yeah. Like we found out something where the media, we're supposed to, you know, give you the yep. stories that you're, that, that normal people can't go out and just figure out and find out. They find it out. They release the story and then it's there. And then they're mad at them for doing it. You did the, you did it. You're mad that you got caught yeah, being yeah. shitty people, being shitty organization. That's all it is. And like the other thing too, with the Canucks, so Rutherford comes out again six weeks ago and says, we're not rebuilding. This is a retool. Like, we're going to turn it around quick. And then yesterday, Patrick Alvin, who is their GM, says, this isn't going to be quick. It's going to take a long time to get right. I'll tell you, they don't have a consistent message. No. Do you think there's too many cooks in the kitchen? <laughs> yes. Like, I, if you ask the regular folk, like, who do you think the GM is? And you showed them a picture of Rutherford and Alvin. People would think people it's People would just think it's Rutherford because he does all the talking. Like, I can't think of, maybe I'm just blanking, but I can't think of another team in the NHL that kind of has that same message. Well, a lot of times the president of hockey ops is also your GM. Yeah, like Ken Holland, Holland Steve Eiserman. Yeah, so I just, you don't need two people to do one job. Unless it's that much of a mess that they don't believe that Alvin can do both. Or Rutherford can do both or whatever it is. Or it's Rutherford just, doesn't want to give up control. I don't know what it is. There. Right so now. in the past, like, two weeks, let's just say, what have the leadership group on like the player leadership group have been saying out in the media. Well, apparently a bunch of the players are pissed behind the scenes because they all liked Bruce. Tyler Myers said something. Yeah, he, yeah, he said something the other day. Yeah. I think in he just of- talked about how it, the noise is affecting their play right now. Yeah, it just distract him. But then Bo Horvat had like an opportunity to address it and he just didn't. But and he's like, I'm not in that space to like comment on this. Like, yeah. you're the captain of the team. I mean, what can he say anyone. though? But Bo Horvat's halfway out the door. That's now the thing too. too. You, su- you support the outgoing coach. Like, that's just. I know you might want to. There's not much you can do about that. There's not yeah. much you can say. Yeah. There were reports though that a bunch of like the kind of Canucks key players were hanging out with Bruce in his office, drinking beers after, and then they all went out and partied. No good. They took Bruce out on the town, which is funny. It's just weird. I can't think of like any other situation where this has happened before. Like any. I no, man. No, yeah. It feels different. It definitely like that. And that's why I, I was, well, I didn't, I didn't do my own research on it because mm-hmm. I got busy weekend, but yeah, I, I just kept seeing thing after thing and I, and I, and I couldn't, I couldn't tell if it was like about money. Um, and like there was something where they are also still paying Travis green too. Okay, so, so like when they hire Tockett, they will be paying three head coaches at one yeah. point. So it'll be yeah. two million for Brudro, two point eight for Tockett, and I think three was Green's deal. So they're paying like seven point eight five million dollars for coaches. Is a coach is coaching the Vancouver Canucks a better gig than TNT? No. No. 
Why would he take? Like, what, what's going on here? I don't you just want to be back in hockey that bad? I think, probably. I think probably that. But here's my thing for it too. So, say you just announced you fired Boudreaux a month ago. You play it off. You're like, yeah, we fired Bruce. Thanks. Um, we hired Rick Tockett, but we have to wait a month because he still has this other job. Mm-hmm. Mike Yo is in charge, and then you can kind of like build up Rick Tockett on TV. You can be like, hey, like boost up Vancouver, boost your stock a little bit. And everyone kind of gets excited for him to come. But instead, yep. you've let it run for so long. Pocket is like in some weird way the bad guy yeah, now, even though he did nothing wrong. He did nothing wrong. And now, yeah, he's put in a bad situation. And you also lie straight up and say, yeah, we hired him this morning. It's like, no, you didn't. That is, yeah, you're that's a liar. That's how Alvin opens the press conference by going, I made the decision this morning to let go of Bruce Boudreaux. It was like Bruce Boudreaux said last for the last three days that he knows he's getting fired. So <laughs> yeah, he um, cried in a press conference yeah. because he was he knew he was done. I was I was watching his last press conference and my girlfriend was like, "Oh, what are you watching?" And I I told her and I was like, "Just listen to what they're saying." And he's basically just talking about like his time in Vancouver and how it's the end. I was like, "This is on the Vancouver Canucks Twitter account right now." Their head coach is talking about how he's getting fired in the morning. It's just it, the whole situation is. Just crazy. It's like, are they just that unaware of what's happening on social media and in the news? Like, are they just... I think so. That's it's incredible. Nuts. I just don't think they care. I just really don't think they care. I think they think eventually this will all go away. But this just feels like a moment that, like, people aren't going to forget. Especially in that market. Yeah, too. that it's sucks. market. Well, who cares? I can... Uh, you know, when it comes to Vancouver, I really... They're one of my least give, liked yeah. teams of all time. They do not move the I, needle. For I at all. hate them like with a passion. I hated everything they've ever done. I don't know why. So this is just another just I, another feather in their cap. I have a weird relationship with the Vancouver Canucks because the first year I moved to Canada, that was when they went to the Stanley Cup final. So I didn't like know a lot about hockey. And it's like, oh, Canadian teams in the final. So you're like, I was somewhat rooting for them to win because you always stung. But then you like. Look at all the players they had at that time. Kessel, BXA, Alex Burrows. There's probably a bunch of other guys, too. Yeah, just like just rats. absolute villains yeah. of the game. Yeah. They, no one really that like. And then the city just puts on their worst <laughs> yeah. their worst face yeah. during that whole thing. Uh, oh, well. Enough uh, Canucks talk. Yeah. Uh, okay. We need to give some love to our friends at Montana's who are going live with their new comfort menu that looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. And they're bringing back the viewing party with their daily deals. We've been running a little contest on social media. Someone is going to win a lunch with Jay and I on Wednesday. I have all the names loaded up on my computer. Are we doing it right now? After the break. We'll do it live. Yeah, so neither Jay or BM are here, but we're back from our break. I have the names loaded up. I'm going to hit my little randomizer button. We had a couple emails. We had a handful on Twitter. I think we had eight or nine on the Real Life Insta and then a few more on the Oilers Nation Insta. So there's How a, are you doing this? On a randomizer. Okay. Ready? Yeah, I'm nervous. I hope it's David Quadrelli. Me too. Frank also <laughs> asked to be entered, and then who's Frank, David Quadrelli? Isn't that the dude from Flames? He works Canucks. for Canucks. Or Canucks Army. Army. Okay. Quads could use a lunch. He's been through a lot recently. Yeah. yeah. We well, just spoke about it. Frank said online that he was coming, but his flight doesn't get in until midnight, so he can't come. It's a late um, dinner. So it's gonna be yeah. It's gonna be Jay and I <laughs> at one o'clock Southside Montana's. Here we go. I'm gonna hit the space bar. I want everyone to. I, is there a drum roll on this? Probably not. Probably not. Let's see here. Nope. All right. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh, Tyler Mulek. Woo. He's an avid Oilers Nation everyday listener. I know that. I didn't know he was a real life listener until right now. Um, all right, Tyler Mulek, you won. So shoot me an email, Tyler at OilersNation.com, so I can get all of uh, all of your info. And Wednesday at 1 o'clock, we are going to be heading to a Montana's for lunch. Me, you, Jay, maybe a special guest. I don't know. We'll see who else shows up. But there you go. Shout out to our friends at Montana's, doing a big lunch out there. All you can eat ribs on Wednesday is the special. So Tyler, I hope you're hungry. Mm. This Tyler is hungry. I hope the other Tyler's hungry. Well, that'll be fun. That'll Glad be a good He's, uh, he's in the chat every single day. He he's is. in the chat before the show starts every day. Yeah. So he earned this. He earned this one. Um, I, uh, I just want to say, I do like it when it's somebody who is like super avid. A diehard. Because yeah. like, I really liked meeting Operator Rich. Like, I know we only got to talk for like a couple minutes, but yeah. I, there's, there's, there's like a, 10 to 12 names that I just know these people from like social media, just yeah. interacting during games, meeting them every once in a while. So... Got it. Yeah, I'm glad it was somebody. Um, so 
Wednesday, we're doing that. Wednesday night, Frank Saravalli comes to town. Thursday, we're going to be doing this podcast, hopefully with Frank. I hope he's not too busy. Then Friday, we're driving up to Jasper for the Jasper Park Lodge and the Jasper Pond Hockey Tournament. Shout out to our friends at Tourism Jasper, by the way. Um, but I'm getting very fired up for this. I'm really fired up for this. I uh, We're going to go down a day early. Thursday night, we're going to leave. Uh, we're going to go skiing on. We got our schedule, and we were a little worried that maybe there'd be a game on Friday, but the way that it stands now is they can fit all the games on Saturday. Yeah. One after another. Um, they've got enough sheets of ice to accommodate it. Also, they didn't have to have games on Friday, which uh, kind of leaves that time open for us. But we're going to go down there on Thursday night, uh, ski Friday, and be back at the lodge in time for um, maybe a few cocktails and mm -hmm. then uh, the hot stove. With Frank and the Flames Nation guys, I might be on the hot stove. No one's told me yet. No. No, never. But it'll be good. a good time regardless, whether I'm on the hot stove or sitting at a table with Chalmers drinking. Yeah, exactly. And like this weekend, I, I remember last week or last weekend we did this and I looked at the thing. Like, I don't know how many teams they can accommodate, but I just want to say to people, if you have groups of friends that you guys have done like a football trip or a golf trip or any type of trip where you just maybe do one like three times a year. I mean, me and my friends, we usually do about three to four weekend trips a year with just the boys going out. Sometimes the wives come along when, when it's like, they obviously don't want to come on a football trip, but like, you know, a golf trip and, and, they're, they're the things that keep groups of guys together. It's yeah. the, it, you know, when you get busy and you start to have kids and you, you start to maybe, you know, not have as much time for the things you used to do. Those are the weekends that, keep you together and this weekend like it reminds me of something that's like the perfect scenario to do that because you all stay at the same place you don't have to be getting in cars you can have a couple cocktails you at two in the afternoon play. you stay and you play and it's just like who doesn't want to play some pond hockey on malign lake with the Jasper Park Lodge in the background, right? So and there's like outdoor fire pits all around there's you know food trucks, food tents and obviously there's a watch party on Saturday night where we'll get to watch the the, the Blackhawks and the Oilers. You know, I I don't, you know, I, I just wanted to stress that, like, if people don't know what this is like, it's like the perfect outing for a weekend with, like, you and six of your friends to go play some pond hockey. Be a little bit competitive, but it's not that competitive. It's just a good time. But, like, it's perfect. And that's why I like it so much is because we had such a good time and you can have bring your kids. Our kids were there. There's yeah. like so much stuff to do at the lodge too, with like sledding yeah. on the driving range. They have sledding you can go walk into this area where they've just got cross country skis, horseshoes, sleds, you just say snowshoes. Snowshoes. What did I say? Horseshoes. Horseshoes. Maybe in the summer. You can maybe play horseshoes. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. And you say, I'll take two of those. Let's go. And you just like walk around the golf course to see the wildlife see it or if you want nothing more to do than just do a walk. Remember the long walk around the, the, did we do that last year? Last year we had the long walk from, or not a long, we had the walk from where we were staying to the games. Right. But you but guys were staying further away than we, we did. We, we, but we did one where you walk basically all the way around a trail on Malign Lake. Oh. And it, it, you just pour yourself a hot chocolate and Bailey's and just with you and your friends walk this thing. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's just, one of my favorite places on earth, obviously, Jasper. We go there a lot. And um, why not mix in some pond hockey? You check the forecast? So I did. Now, it's supposed to be really, really, really nice up until Sunday. Sunday, then it gets cold, unless it's changed. So what I Has have Has it creeped here, into Saturday now? Friday, minus three with snow. High of minus three with snow. Okay. That's not terrible. Lows of minus 16, that's fine. Saturday, sunny, clear, high of minus 11, low of minus 22. Okay, so it is creeping into Saturday a bit. A bit, but what I'll say, I would rather have it be minus 11 and clear 100%. and sunny. 100%. Because the ice will stay good, and I don't want it to snow. 100%. If you remember last year, it was really, really warm, like this warm going yeah. into it, and they were working overtime to keep the ice fresh, yeah. but it wasn't dipping down to like the minus 10s at night. Yeah, yeah. And so it's going to this year. Um, the problem with it, with it being nice is the walking paths get really slushy. To uh, everywhere, yeah, yeah. right? So, um, no, minus 11 and clear is like perfect outdoor yeah. hockey. And I mean, like I said, there's fire pits everywhere. It, plus, you're working up a little bit of a sweat. Are you guys actually going to wear shin pads? There's no. been a lot of talk. No, I'm not wearing shin pads. I'm, I might wear, like I have a pair of soccer shin pads. 
I'm debating throwing those on. Nah. See, I, I, there, you, somebody was like, I'm wearing full equipment. And I thought, I thought you guys were joking, but now I, yeah, I think Bagrock yeah. was kidding. It's just gloves, sticks, helmet, helmet, and skates. Mm -hmm. And we have to bring some sticks because Frank is flying in from Philly, obviously. And Adam Seaborn is flying in from Toronto. And if you're going to bring a stick, you, it's a checked bag, right? You'd put it in a stick. And you don't want to be checking luggage right now. Well, no, no. you don't want to do that. Um, so it's yeah, okay, we'll hook them up. Yeah, we'll they're up. not real net. How big are the nets? They're just a little small. Yeah, ones, they're right? little like pond hockey nets. Yeah, they're so like just four inches in. off. Four the inches ground. high and probably like ten inches wide. Okay, so mm, I'd not... say about a foot wide, uh, maybe a foot and a half, two feet wide. Yeah, uh, not too. Yeah, feet. so it's not easy to bury from like center. No, they're... someone asked me that. They're like, with no goalies, like aren't you? Isn't aren't you shooting from everywhere? No. And I was like, oh, like sometimes some guys will, but it's hard. Yeah, we got to come up with a strategy. Yeah, we need a better playbook than we did last year. Yeah. We kind of all just freewheeled. Yeah, it didn't work. No. But Frank's a D-man. Apparently, he's good. I don't know what Seaborn plays, but he's young. He's only 30, so he should bring us some juice. Should be good. Yeah. Should be fun. Should be a good time out at Jasper. Shout out to uh, Tourism Jasper as well. Jasper in January is on right now. They got some really, really cool events. Six more days. <laughs> so still time to deck away for a little weekend mountain getaway and enjoy Jasper in January. Um, What else did I want to hit on? Oh, Yes, I had a guest stop by earlier today, and I'm really excited to uh, bring this one over. So, as you know, this city absolutely loves our boy Ben Stelter and the Stelter family. Yep. Um, the family started the Ben Stelter Fund as well, and this year is the first annual Ben Stelter Memorial Tournament. It's out February 16th to 19th at the Kinsman Twin Arenas. And you know what? I won't even get into more details right now. I am just going to play you my interview with Mike Stelter. Ben's dad, Mike, and Alec Card, who was one of the organizing chairs of the tournament. So here's that chat. A very special interview today on the Real Life Podcast. Uh, there is a tournament coming up in a few weeks in Edmonton, the Ben Stelter Memorial Tournament in support of the Ben Stelter Fund. And joining me today on the pod is Mike Stelter and also Alec Card, who's a part of the organizing committee. Uh, Mike, welcome in to the office here and thanks for stopping by and uh, talking a little bit. Yeah, thanks for having us in. I'm pretty excited for it. Yeah, I mean, seeing this and like I was reading through the details the other day when when Alec fired him over like this looks like a great time and we'll talk about the details and the event and all that kind of stuff. But first, I just wanted to get your thoughts the first kind of few months here of the Ben Stelter Fund and uh, how that's all been going. It's been big. Um, yeah, it kicked off really well. We couldn't be happier with how it kicked off and just the overwhelming support from the community for it. Uh, to see the fun starting to roll in is yeah. really cool. Then to see people like Alec and buddy Ali putting on this tournament um, is huge. And just the support we've gotten everywhere where we're pumped to, to help a lot of kids and every dollar we see coming in, we, we get excited thinking like this is going to help so many kids. Yeah. So uh, for those listening who maybe don't know, where are the funds kind of going? So we have four main pillars with the Ben Stelter fund. Uh, the first one is a big one. It's really special to us. Uh, it's no secret. Ben got a lot of really cool experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of kids going through this fight that don't get cool experiences. It's just, um, there's so much crap with it where they're just the hospital visits, all the treatment, stuff like that. Uh, so we want to make sure that we can give kids cool experiences. Uh, some of them will just be through new connections made and stuff like that. Some will be from the money coming in, obviously. Um, to make sure they get to do cool stuff. Like everything with the Oilers, Ben got to go to Disneyland. Um, we were so fortunate to be able to get that going yeah. and stuff. So that's a big one. Uh, the next one we have is for medical equipment where there's so much stuff that's just not covered um, by Alberta Health or personal benefits don't help at all. We want to lessen that financial burden yeah. on the family. Um, near the end, Ben was having a bit of a tough time getting around and we needed a walker, for example. And this walker was like, it's nothing special. It was like four grand. Um, Alberta Health covers nothing for it. And our personal benefits, which are pretty good. I think they said they could cover like $40, which is nothing. <laughs> That's not four so, grand. No. Yeah. So we want to be able to help families with stuff like that, just so they don't have to worry and stress about that. They can get the equipment they need. Um, the next big one, uh, which is the one that's going to take a ton of money, is the research. Okay. Where we want to hopefully fund our own research chair eventually. Um, to find better treatments for glioblastoma, different brain tumor types as well, um, and hopefully a cure one day so kids and families don't have to go through this. I love that. I love that last one, but also the experience side of it because you're right. I mean, not everyone got to do or gets to do what Ben does for a lot of families. It is, you know, really dark time, obviously. So seeing some of it go towards that is uh, really heartwarming and also 
what I like tying it into this tournament is that this tournament is about hockey and it's about people who play it for the love of the sport. And obviously we know Ben was a massive Oilers fan. So it's kind of neat that in a tournament like this, you're tying in a lot of what Ben loved. Eh? Exactly. That's a, the really cool part with it, where there was so much stuff he loved, um, but we can jump in with these hockey tournaments. Like this is cool. That was yeah. Ben's favorite thing, right? Hockey. And now it's a weekend full of hockey. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of it, Alec. Uh, take us through like sort of the fringe details. When is this thing? Where is it? Maybe even a little bit on how this all came about. Yeah. Uh, well, the tournament itself is taking place uh, Thursday, February 16th through Sunday, February 19th. It's all out of the Kinsman Twin Arenas on the south side. Uh, cited it's got, uh, we've got a liquor license for the whole weekend. So beer gardens. Uh, even if you're not playing in the tournament, yeah. it's going to be a really cool place to come hang out. We're going to have Oilers alumni there throughout the weekend. And, you know, really, there's just going to be something for everybody, which is a really cool part of it. Uh, as far as how it came to be, uh, our our good friend, Ali Badur, uh, him and I kind of started uh, talking about this in the summer, he said, uh, you know, it would be great if some somewhere down the road we're able to get uh, a tournament uh, off the ground to raise funds. And fortunately, a uh, situation came around where the Kinsman Club of Edmonton reached out to the CCRHL, uh, asked them if they had interest in operating a tournament because they had this chunk of ice allocated. Oh. And you know, right from there, I thought, well, I mean, this just fits together way too well. Mm -hmm. uh, and to have such an amazing cause to raise uh, funds for, it's it's really exciting. And that's a great spot to do it in as well with the Kinsman. I mean, when I think about that rink and kind of the layout of things, it's awesome for a tournament like this. Um, there are four different divisions, competitive rec A, rec B, and a draft tournament. You were telling me before we started recording though, Alec, that there aren't even really that many more spots left. Like the response to this thing has been unbelievable. Yeah, I, yeah it's, uh, it's really awesome to see. I mean, we really didn't even get details out to everybody until... Pretty much January 1st and wow. in a couple of weeks we're already almost at capacity we've got space for you know a few more players uh, to sign up in the draft portion uh, we could probably use one more women's team uh, okay. we do have a women's division as well nice. playing in this so you know outside of that it's uh, it's pretty much filled up which is incredible to see the support from the community it's like 23 days ago and you guys filled up basically an entire hockey tournament that that's just crazy hey it's cool these guys have been working their butts off uh alec with all the planning and stuff uh ali's been getting tons of really cool stuff for a silent auction and stuff so it's gonna be big it's gonna be really cool yeah i was gonna say you mentioned kind of something for everyone obviously the beer gardens there food and then the silent auction as well there's gonna be some pretty sweet stuff in that for oilers fans yeah definitely Alec can talk about a little bit of it um we got Connor signed some really cool stuff. We have some signed Connor pucks, some signed Connor jerseys. Uh, Al can talk about all the hockey card stuff too. Yeah, we, uh, he, he's not actually supposed to, <laughs> but because this is for Ben, he was willing to, he, we have, uh, one of his young guns that he yeah. autographed, which Unreal. is, uh, for very, if people who know hockey cards, that is like, who know hockey cards. Yeah. That's, uh, that's one of the big ones. He also signed one of Ben's cards from upper oh, deck man. uh and yeah we're uh you know super excited to see where you know where the bidding goes on those things and the awesome part is because it's all donation a hundred percent of it is going to the ben stelter fund yeah that's actually i was just while we were going through the events like you mentioned kinsman provided the ice as well um, yep. so like the cost of this, like relatively low, like this is going to be unreal for the foundation just to have something like this with all these great prizes with, you know, the ice being covered and all that. That's really impressive. Yeah. We're pumped. And again, it goes right back to like, this is going to help so many kids. Yeah. This can get some really cool experiences. So this is. This is going to be good. Uh, it's Thursday evening, Friday evening, and then all day Saturday. The finals are going to be played on Sunday. Just for people who maybe want the silent auction side of things, when does that open and end? Uh, I mean, it's going to be open all throughout that okay. time. Thursday night will be the first night of the silent auction, and it's going to run through right until finals conclude. Uh, and we're wrapping up on the Sunday roughly around 8 o'clock at night. 
So that's kind of when right. uh, everyone will be getting their final bids in. And uh, I know uh, another really cool part of this is Mike, uh, Mike and Leah are going to be at the Rangers game on the Friday night. I don't know if that's uh, public. Is it public? Am I going to no, take this out? I don't think out? so. We'll be out there selling some stuff at the Oilers game. Hopefully we're going to have some, um, some Ben, uh, Ben Stelter fund um, bracelets, yeah. sell those some, some cool stickers and stuff. And um, then we'll be at the, um, at the tournament all weekend long. So we'll be there. We can tell people about the fund, what we're doing. We'll be there to accept donations as well. Um, yeah. It'll be good to see everybody. Any other big details you kind of want to get out there with this? Uh, I would say the biggest thing is you don't have to be a participant to come out and experience yeah. this. It's going to be, you know, a great time. Uh, you know, just come out, check out the memorabilia mm-hmm. that's there. Like the Oilers are going to be donating some stuff too. So there's going to be lots of really cool stuff to check out there. And it's not all hockey related. I mean, uh, Anytime Fitness uh, donated five uh, annual memberships oh, wow. for their gym. Like the uh, the donations have just been incredible. Uh, so yeah, come check out the silent auction, grab a beer, sit in the stands, watch a game. Uh, That's so it's, cool. It's going to be a lot of fun. That is really cool. Um, hopefully the first annual, is that what we're going to, or not throw an annual behind it yet? Oh, we're throwing an annual All behind right. it. <laughs> um, in terms of the fund and other stuff, anything else going on in the near future here? Yeah, there's some really cool stuff coming. Um, we have this going, there's going to be, uh, the Friday after there's going to be hockey hooky for Ben. We're going to try to get some schools involved, some different organizations oh, cool. where take the afternoon off. We'll play hockey for Ben. Uh, it'll be all levels competitive to very leisure um, to try to raise some money. And then coming up after that is going to be the world's longest game for kids, oh. uh, which we're pretty pumped for, too. So there's some really <laughs> cool stuff coming. There's so much support from the the community to help make this success success. And it's it's awesome. Yeah. that it, I mean, it is awesome to see, you know, how much we here at Oilers nation love Ben and, and we love the work you guys are doing here with the Ben Stelter fund as well. Again, February 16th to 19th at the Kinsman twin arenas is when this thing is going down. And like we've said a few times now is something for everyone out here. It's not just, if you're going there to play hockey, it's going to be a really, really cool community event. And that, like you said, is one of the pillars, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, guys, thanks for coming down, checking out the office, stopping by the pod and uh, we'll see you February 16th to 19th down at the Kinsman. Sounds awesome. good. Thanks, thanks for having for, us. Yeah. Thanks <laughs> Tyler. There you go. Um, shout out to both Mike and uh, Alec for coming down to the studio for a little bit. Ben Stelter, that fund has a goal of $1 million. You can head to Ben Stelter fund dot com or dot ca or no yeah ben stelter fund.com if you uh, want to make a donation yourself or head down to the kinsman for a little hockey tournament february 16th and 19th i think i might play in it actually yeah you should it's gonna be a good time well how like i'm i'm unfortunately i wasn't here for the interview yep but i do have a question yep. about it and maybe it was answered in the interview but how are the team is it is it just you put in a team so i thought too so it is uh they have competitive rec a rec b a women's division and then if you're a solo player you can just go in and there's a draft tournament nice so there's like five different ways you can play kinsman twin arenas thursday night friday night all day saturday and then sunday is the finals so it's a long tournament as well they got connor to bring a bunch of stuff um sign some hockey cards sign some jerseys they have more stuff coming from uh from the Oilers too, and a bunch. They were telling me some stuff behind the scenes that isn't public yet. It's it's going to be sick. Oilers alumni stop it in all weekend. Are they um, playing? I like some, some might be. Yeah, oh. There's a little surprise. There's a little surprise. Is it McDavid. Yeah, Connor McDavid <laughs> will be on one of the teams. I'm kidding, obviously. Um, if you want so more info, you can go to ccrhl.ca, and it's like the first page or the first thing on the CCRHL website. So you can click into that. Um, that's also the Beerly Guy plan. They're a good league, and they put on good tournaments, and this is going to be an exceptional one. So shout out to Mike Stelter again for uh, swinging down and chatting with me about that a little bit. <sighs> what else? What else? What else? When we are at the 40-minute mark. We could. I do awesome. really, really yeah. like... Taking it back to the others for a second, just exactly how they're looking right now at this second half team. And it's almost like they're, they might win the division. Yeah. Like it went, it went from panic time to yeah. like, everybody's, Oh, no big deal again. All of a sudden. Well, also like this is, this is an important stretch of hockey too, just to keep gaining ground. Still their next seven opponents are against non playoff teams, but that, yeah, yeah, I know. And that gate, but 
So I was at the game against Tampa, and that had a different feel to it. Oh, that was the big, best game of the year. Best game be of the at. year. Yeah, it was great. It was so fast, and like, you know, I, I could tell right off the bat that this was going to be an exciting game just yeah. because of the sheer speed of like, and it was six and a half minutes with the one with without a whistle to start the game. Yeah, right. six yeah. and a half, and it was just back to back. Like it was, it was great. And then I saw. You know, that we've had questions about our team toughness and how we can step up and how we can take care of the bullshit. Yeah. And Pat Maroon, he clearly bullshit. had a vision in his mind that his job was to get our stars off their game. Yeah. Didn't and work, that's the type of bullshit that we we normally didn't really have the horses. And if we did, it was guys like Darnell who we didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Kane coming back from his injury and you're just like, God, please just don't have to do this right now, right? Clint like Shady. I don't and we got my boy Clem. I mean, like it, it's it's I know that we we talk a lot about how much we like Clem, but like that was just a small morsel into like, okay, like he can be that guy. He's he's that guy for us. And he's him. He's him. And it was a really fun game and it made me think to myself if we saw them in a seven game series, that would be a hell of a good time. Because we'd be them the twice this year. Yeah, true. Would be in the Stanley Cup Finals. So that so would be a good time. Is there? What's the talk right now around our goaltending? Because Jack has been a net. Jack's back for this very, very, very um, uh, important. I would say street. he's gone six straight starts with a win now. Yep. Six and zero. Oh, his last six starts. But his only loss was that LA game, which he didn't start, and he was kind he of was thrown. Yeah, there. it's just how do you keep? So well, we obviously have an all star in Stuart Skinner, which is f awesome. Great. You know, and I saw a tweet that said. The Oilers, we've always bitched about our goalie. Like, always. Yep. It's just, a, it's ingrained in us, right? And it took me so long and so much searching to finally see something that encapsulated where we're at right now. We have a hometown goaltender that we drafted, developed, and is an all-star. And is now signed for three more years. Yeah. Why are isn't his name on every billboard. What are we doing well, here? You know, like, I know we don't want to put that much pressure on him, but yeah. we should really, really, really sit here and understand that it's gone really right right now for him yep. so far. Everything's been done correctly, right? Mm -hmm. Now you have Jack Campbell in there. We have two really good goaltenders right now. So it should not be a problem. And that should be a good feeling for everybody. I think it's just a tough decision, right? Every night, which is what you want in goaltenders. Like we were talking about it today already. Like, what do you do now for the next two games? So you say play you just on make Wednesday. it fair and even. I but think so. Split you, them, so yeah. Just, just split, split them. them. So would you play Skinner on Wednesday and then Saturday they play again, right? Yeah, they, I, I would Saturday. go Campbell Wednesday because he's been off for a bit and then Skinner one more time before the All-Star game. Or maybe they want to sit Skinner before he goes to All-Star. The thing is, you can't but go if, wrong. But if, so. if he sits before he goes to All-Star, like I know everybody sits through the All-Star break, but like he... Yeah, it's a long... But at least he'll be getting action in the All-Star break. At least he'll be putting his equipment... Like, yeah. okay, obviously the rest of the team still practices during All-Star break. It's our bye week that's PA mandated. You got to take, I think, like... Six of those days are pure off days. So they don't get together. They okay, well, that's good to know. Um, or they, if they do, it's like bookended, right? It's like, okay, games are at the end of the bye week. Um, Yeah. Stuart Skinner going to Florida. You know who else is going to Florida for the All-Star game? You. Are you? Yes, I am. Very cool. We were talking about checked bags, and that's what reminded me of this. So getting to that area, Florida, is very difficult from Edmonton, I learned. Yeah, how do you get there? Edmonton, so, Toronto down? So, yeah, my flight out, Wednesday I leave, fly to Toronto, have an hour 20 in Toronto is my layover, and then down to Florida. I'm going to have all the equipment checked in a bag. I am rather nervous about Pearson. Are you solo? Yeah. So it's all your responsibility. I'm very nervous about Pearson being able to... Get that to Florida? Get that equipment off the Toronto plane onto the Florida plane in an hour 20. That feels like a very tight timeline for me. Oy. I'm pretty nervous about it. Yeah. So I'm packing a couple uh, things, a couple necessities. Some backup you plans? In my backpack. Is this going to be the longest, is this going to be the most amount of times you've slept not in your own bed in a three weeks span? Oh, yeah. You, it's also going to be Because you've gone from Vegas, yeah. then you're here for a week, go to Jasper. And then I leave. You're literally Jasper. coming home yeah. from Jasper and flying to Florida. Yeah. What if you mailed stuff? You ever thought about that? What if you mailed some of the equipment down to Florida? Just down to the hotel? Yeah, I'd send it to the hotel. Do I trust the mail service with a bunch of very breakable gear? Put some foam around. When I was 
16, 17, I think I was 17 years old. I didn't really, I, I had a job, but I wanted extra money. So my friend's mom owned a place that would do temporary labor. And for one night she said, just try it, just try it. And I said, well, what's the job? She said, well, from 11 o'clock at night till six o'clock in the morning, you're going to go to Pure Layer Courier and you're going to sit and you're going to separate packages. You're going to, okay. this is before it was all automated. Yeah. I would not ship that equipment <laughs> if they're still using the same systems that they're using <laughs> back then because I dropped a lot of stuff. Fair. So anyways, and it's, you know, so when it I goes would probably just suitcase, keep it on your, yeah. You can't put it like how big, how big are we talking? What is, what is this amount of stuff that you need to take? I need. Can't fit in a carry on? I need, no, I need two tripods, camera, the roadcaster, two or three mics, XLR cables. So basically like most of the stuff that we're looking pretty at. Much pretty much everything yep. in this room. When we went to Vegas, three people took it. Again, that's how so. we jammed it into carry on. So I'm going to get like a big luggage suitcase and I wrap it all up in hoodies and shirts. And that's how I. <laughs> We're not a very professional organization here. No, we are, but we need one of those armor cases, like the armor. I know. Yeah, I want to buy one, but and get the foam. Oh my god, we can make like a night of it, and we cut out the foam. Oh, we cut out like a microphone, set it in. It'll be like so, like James Bond professional. It'd be sick. It'd be a lot of fun. But until then, it goes in my red suitcase, um, wrapped in a hoodie. Yeah, wrapped in a hoodie. Jesus. So Christ. my flight. What back, are we doing here? So the All Star <laughs> Games on Saturday. Yeah. Thankfully, it's like early afternoonish kind of thing. Right, is when it starts. It ends. I fly home the next morning at 7.20 a.m. is when my flight leaves. Um, I fly from F Fort Lauderdale at 7.20 to Newark. Wow. I have an hour and a half in Newark. Then I fly to Toronto. Where is that? New Jersey. Oh, the, the Devil's playing Newark. Oh, okay. um, it's the state of New Jersey. I get it. Yep. <laughs> then I fly to Toronto. I have a six and a half hour layover in Toronto. By yourself. Yeah. After All Star Weekend. Yeah. A wow. travel day that starts at 7 a.m. Eastern and ends at, I think, 9 p.m. Mountain. Oh. Not fun, guys. My question Am I allowed to leave Pearson when I get there during that six and a half hours? Yeah, I think so. I don't see why not. As long as you cross the border, which you would have, right? I would get through, I would go through customs when I land. Yeah. Yeah, you can leave and just, because the thing, you, as long as you have a ticket, you just got to go back through security. Yeah. Yeah, so you can leave. Why I would was, you want to, though? Okay, so here's my thing. I'm going to have already put back about four hours of flying in the morning. Yeah. And I, I'll buy, probably buy Wi-Fi on the plane and, like, work and watch TV shows, whatever, four hours. Do I really just want to, like, sit in one spot for six and a half hours? Or will my travel day feel that much better if I just take the train into Toronto and, like, walk around Toronto for two hours? Stretch my legs a little bit? Yeah, it's a risky bit of business, man. Like, I don't know. What if you just... I'd be so stressed out about getting back on time that I would much rather just you know, have your laptop. You can download like some shows. You can do work. I would rather just pay like the $40 or whatever it costs to go into like one of the executive lounges oh and just God. sit in a nice comfortable chair, charging up your shit. That time will fly if you have things to do. Yeah, that's actually fair. I didn't even think about like paying to go into one of those lounges. Yeah. If anyone has any recommendations for me, my DMs are open. What to do in Pearson with a six and a half hour layover. Yeah. Maybe there's somewhere I can like get a massage. Probably. Everyone said that they should put gyms in, in uh, airports. Maybe and then I heard that gym. somebody had done that. That oh. you could like actually go work out. There's a, I think it's Singapore has like an aquarium or a zoo or something in the airport or some like tropical tree area. Yeah. That'd be cool. Maybe pay but a Again, so a six that. and a half hour layover though. <laughs> Let's say it takes me half an hour to get through customs. I got six hours left. Take. 30 minutes to get into the city from the train. Might have to wait for the train a bit, whatever. 30 minutes in, still five and a half hours. I could chill in the city for two and a half hours, take the train back, and still be back with two hours and change to spare. Hypothetically. Could go to the Hall of Fame. Train breaks down. Don't bother. How are you going to get back to the airport? Take an Uber. Car accident. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we I go. I mean, you're <laughs> right. You're stuck. You're right. I could get in a car accident. Not, um, not you. Maybe there's some someone else in it. I'm just telling you that I would. I wouldn't risk it. Knowing risk. how badly I would want to be getting home after all I'm of this travel, be, I, but that's why I want the time to go by as fast as humanly possible. Just what could you do in Toronto that's worth the risk? Meet up with a friend. Uh, could go to the Hockey Hall of Fame. Don't I bother. You, I think you can like Actually. shower and stuff in these suites, right? Not sure. The places like yeah, you can refresh a, a little bit. Get a hotel room and have a nap. 
That'd be, exp- that'd be a lot more expensive than the executive lounge. <laughs> Just go to the lounge, man. That'd also be a lot more stressful. Get greased. Because I feel like I'd, yeah. The minute you start, the minute you start, yeah. the minute you have two beers, time starts flying. I do think you get like a complimentary drink in there too. You can get lounge. as many as you want. Is it, is it huh? unlimited? Yeah. And yeah, okay. I think there's food in there. Okay, that's probably the play then yeah. is to get in one of these lounges. TVs. Wash TV. It's a Sunday. Oh, there's no football on. See, if there's football on, I wouldn't be that. No, mad that's about gonna it. be that's gonna be bye week. Pro Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. No, See, no if there NFL, was obviously. if there was a full NFL slate, I'd have no complaints. Okay. So can we talk? Let's just let's just wrap this thing up with some yeah. NFL this weekend. I don't really don't want to. I know you don't. Your Bills. Another big letdown. What Shut happened? Their pants. Just, what the fuck happened? I, they just didn't show up. They let the moment get the best of them, and they I think maybe thought that game was gonna start a little slower than it did, and the Bengals were just ready. I right. just don't it's understand just, how you can be playing in Buffalo in the snow where all week you're saying like this is exactly what we want you have number three in the building yeah. and you guys come out absolutely flat yep and even to the end of the game where like you saw Gabe Dave like the wide receivers just didn't look like they were willing to sell out for the for nope and it was and Joe Burrow picked them apart too. Joe Burrow was fantastic. Yeah, the Cincinnati Bengals were fantastic. Yep. So yeah, that's a really that's a big disappointment because I think a lot of I think. I think at this point, if you're weren't if you if you're not a Dallas Cowboys fan, most likely if, if you didn't have a dog in the fight, you're most likely a Bills fan. I was hoping that they would yeah. go far. Um, they pooched it, and they pooched it. Yeah, I just so now it sucks. We didn't even get a good game either. So now who now who like so we got the Kansas City Chiefs, we've got the San Francisco 49ers, we've got the uh, Philly. Um, Cleveland Browns or no. Cle- uh, Cincinnati Bengals and <laughs> Philadelphia Eagles. I'm rooting for the Niners. It's uh, I am too. The only Brock difference. Purdy, Mister Relevant. I kind of want to yeah. see it. Yeah. The only difference from this final four is the Rams and Philly. They're the only two teams that aren't the same. Why? Because it was Rams and Niners. It was last Rams year. and. And Bengals. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I and, and, oh yeah, Rams and Niners and yeah. Bengals, Chiefs. So yeah, it's exactly the same. Besides that, I think if it comes down to a Niners, or is it Rams and Bucks? No, no, Bucks or, no. Yeah, Bucks didn't make. It. Never mind. Ignore me. I think Niners Chiefs is what I want to see. Yeah, me too. No, uh, uh, Joey Burrow, cool story. No, I yeah, maybe I like the idea of any of those teams really winning. I think the Chiefs angle is good because he's just like, you know what, you're right. continues. Bengals finally get like, not finally get over them, but like redemption after last year. Niners, Brock Purdy, and then Philly. Everyone's saying how bad they are when they're like, what are they, 12 and 3 or something? Yeah. Like, they had no cool. expectations coming into the year. No, I think everyone had them last in that division. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy. But how about, uh, how about the fact the Cowboys didn't want to kick the ball? Yeah, Dak Prescott just kept That was appointment picks. viewing. Was watching yeah. him kick a field goal after missing four <laughs> extra points, Anyone? and that first one that was blocked when they went down to the camera angle uh, right on the field, you know, you were like, "Oh, it was blocked. I, there's nothing he could do about that." He shanked it so low left so bad, yeah. that it was not going to go. Even if it wasn't blocked, it was missing, and that would have been five in a row. Like he, his career is probably you're done. done. Right? Oh, yeah. isn't it? I think it's so. Like I understand it, but it's so wild that a kicker can miss like two or three kicks in a game, and that's it. Where a quarterback could throw five picks in one game, and they probably start the next week. I know yeah. it's like a lot different because the sample size, obviously, but also the fact of Dak Prescott reacting to those missed kicks last week, and then you see the video of CD Lamb being like, "Hey, man, like it's fine. Like we'll get there anyway," and they won. And then, of course, they go for the fourth down. They get it, and then the next play throws a pick. Like I know, man, just so well. Ironic. The end of the game. I mean, that was one of the laziest plays I've ever seen out of a player. Like he, all you do is get two feet down, and he steps out of bounds. Like you just that's <laughs> that's just bad awareness of the moment right yep. there. And then they stand up to do what's going to be like a backyard school bo- like school ground play here now. <laughs> And he just throws it to a guy who immediately gets lit up. It's brutal. And you're just like, what, what was that? <laughs> Those Sunday like, games were Why tough. the hell didn't you just th- like air it out or something? They just yep. throw it 10 yards. Everybody stands yeah. there and watches the guy get nailed. And they're like, okay, there's our season. I've, I've never understood why teams do that. Because we saw Kirk Cousins do it too in when they played yeah. the Giants. You're on the fourth down. Oh, there was two seconds left in the other one. Like Throw the ball past the first down marker at least. And at least give yourself some chance. And then it was the so it was so weird. Allergy, the end of that uh, game was so center. weird. And we talked about this earlier, but there's a lot of videos of people smashing their TVs. It's the dumbest. If you thing. smash your TV after your 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 favorite sports team loses, I'm sorry, you're just an idiot. You're just simply an idiot. I understand wanting to go viral, but is that what you want to be like? What yeah. showing your friends and family? Hey, look, 
38 million views of me doing this. Like, for all I know, some of those people's TVs didn't work and it was a staged video, yeah, but probably. like still, like... But even, that's what I'm saying, Hey, right? there's my hockey coach. Look at him. He went viral. Why? He threw his TV out of his window <laughs> after his sports team <laughs> lost. <laughs> It doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's a good. That's, that's a pretty cool thing to show everybody. He's no longer your hockey coach. So Jamie. dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Uh, before we wrap this bad boy up, gotta give some love to Oodle Noodle. Plenty of locations. If you're down in Calgary and haven't checked it out, what the hell's wrong with you? Come on, figure it out. And uh, also AMA Travel. We're going to Toronto, March 10th to 12th. Not just for a layover either. We're going in there and staying. <laughs> Oilers, Leafs, all that good stuff. It'll be a ton of fun. Nationgear.ca, AMA Travel makes it fantastic. So all of our experience is powered by them. Uh, Chalmers, thanks for being one of the few who showed up today. Liam, thanks for hopping in as well. No problem. We usually have a meeting at this time. so Yeah, this happen. was our meeting. Yeah, this was a meeting of the minds. All right, we'll be back on Thursday, hopefully with Frank Saravalli. Talk to you then.